Hey guys, Metal Jesus here, and I am back with a review of the Ambernick RG406V. I was sent this for review, and I was interested in checking it out because this is my first time actually messing around with one of these Ambernick handhelds. I know it's kind of hard to believe because they've been around for quite a while now. They have many different models. But the reason why I was very interested in checking this one out is because it's their most powerful one, and I wanted to know specifically if now we can run PlayStation 2, GameCube, Wii, those type of generation of games on this size of a handheld. And so that's what I'm gonna do in this video is not really focus on the 8-bit and the 16-bit generation of games. We all know that these type of handhelds can run those usually just fine, but instead we're gonna go a little bit deeper into the 32-bit, the 3D realm of games and put it through its paces there. But first, let's take a look at the specs, right? So to start off with, it's got a four inch IPS screen. This is multi-touch, which is very important because this runs Android 13. So if you are used to an Android device, this is gonna be right at home for you. And obviously having multi-touch is very important. And the display is 960 by 720 resolution. Uh, its CPU is an eight core processor that will go up to 2.7 gigahertz. And so that's gonna be key, obviously, to running some of these more complex 3D games. It's also got a quad core graphics processor with eight gigabytes of system RAM. And this thing supports up to two terabyte micro SD cards. And then the big selling point here is that it has the Hall Effect thumbsticks, which are configurable here with these colored LEDs. And so this is what you're gonna need, obviously, if you're gonna wanna be playing PlayStation 2 games, GameCube games, things like that. It also supports 5G Wi-Fi, it's got Bluetooth, and they claim it gets about eight hours of battery life. And I've been messing around with this for a couple weeks now, and I would say that seems pretty accurate. Although, again, it really depends on the type of things that you're running on it. If you're running older games, you're probably gonna maybe have more battery life than that. Uh, if you're you know running something that's gonna be pushing it, well, obviously you're gonna get less. But so far, actually, the battery life in this has been pretty decent. And then you power this by a USB-C port on the top of the device. And what's cool about that is that you can obviously recharge the lithium ion battery that's inside of it, but you can also do video out. And so a lot of the footage that you'll see, the direct feed, the, the direct capture will be from that USB out. And then the prices for these range, depending on if you need an SD card, this one here is about $184, depending on the types of deals that they have running at the time. Or if you want a 128 gigabyte micro SD card, it looks like that's gonna set you back another $10. And that SD card does come with quite a few games. It's a very random selection of games that I'm going to assume are probably not licensed. So if that's a problem for you, then obviously move along. It's not gonna be something that you're gonna be interested in, but of course you could just get the one without the SD card, save yourself a little bit of money and put your own games on there. And like I mentioned, I've been using this for a couple weeks now and I do like the overall design of it. It's kind of like a fat Game Boy or something like that. Uh, I like how the, the upper half is pretty much that screen. It's only four inches, but it's using that space pretty well, I think. And then on the back of it, you have those indents there, which really are pretty comfortable for your fingers to kind of curl around and grip. And then you also have the four shoulder buttons as well. That said, for adult hands, this can be a little bit awkward using those thumbsticks because basically you end up having to use this kind of almost in the upper parts of your fingers, almost at the fingertips, in order to get your thumbs down on those thumbsticks and use them in 3D games. The form factor is interesting. It's it's a little small for my, my big mitts. Ah, busted. And I find myself, I keep tipping it this way. So I go, oh, instead of being upright like that, when using this for long periods of time, that can be kind of tiring and you can get hand cramps a little bit. It's just simply because obviously adult hands, I think if you have smaller hands, this would be less of an issue. And like I said, this thing comes with a ton of emulators and pre-installed games, pretty much everything that you're gonna want to play up to, like I said, the PlayStation 2 and the GameCube, the Wii era, that sort of stuff. So let's go ahead and check out PlayStation 2 games because I was very curious to see how this would run them. 
you guys know me, I love SSX3, so this is my first game I threw at it. And initially, I was like, oh, this is running pretty well. However, then it stutters as you go into a new area. Now keep in mind, SSX3 is kind of an open world game in that there's large sections where you know, you can kind of go wherever you want. And I think this is probably a loading or a streaming issue trying to get that data off the SD card. But then I found a profile under the emulator settings under I, you see it right here. And then you go to general settings and then set fast settings. And that reconfigures the emulator to basically run a little bit better. Now it will give you all sorts of warnings of which I don't really understand any of it. And it doesn't really matter because that actually pretty much fixes it, or at least makes it run a lot better. I was able to play quite a bit of SSX3 using those fast settings. Pretty much eliminated that really kind of weird stuttering there. Now, I don't think the frame rate is perfect, but it's very playable. I was playing SSX3 and also Downhill Domination, and uh, yeah, it's running really well. I also checked out 007 Nightfire. This is a great first person shooter and this was running flawlessly. Now, again, I suspect it's because it's it's probably loading the entire level in, that's my guess, and maybe this is maybe, you know, a more simple first-person shooter, so it's not pushing, you know, the PlayStation 2 emulator as hard as some of the other games, but yeah, this is very playable. Paul pretty much insisted that we check out one of our go-to games on the PlayStation 2, that is Need for Speed Hot Pursuit 2. This is a game that he and I played for literally years back in the day. We love this game so much. Very curious to see how it turns out on this. And with default settings, runs great. So this is really fun to see. Now, obviously I didn't try every PlayStation 2 game, but the ones I did try actually seem to work pretty well with those fast settings. Again, it's not gonna be, you know, 60 frames a second, no glitches whatsoever, but I can definitely see this as being completely playable, so it works well. Moving on to the GameCube, and I had to check out Eternal Darkness, and I found that this game right out of the gate runs really well. The only thing I would say, and you're probably seeing this in some of the, the, the footage that I captured, it's a little bit dark coming out of that USB port. It's not on the screen when you're playing it, actually, so that's either a setting within the device itself or maybe with my capture device. Next, I threw Tony Hawk Underground at it. And again, like some of these other things, there was a little bit of stuttering here and there at the beginning of a level as it was trying to, to bring all the assets in. But once it got running, it wasn't bad at all, actually. I was really enjoying this game quite a bit. It's funny because I was having to relearn my Tony Hawk skills a little bit, especially with these controls and wasn't doing as hot as I normally would, but it was fun to, to get back into this game a bit. A similar thing with Star Wars Rogue Squadron 2. So, you know, we're approaching the Death Star here, and as you can see, it gets a little bit of rough, you know, as it's kind of getting that level set up. But then after, you know, a couple seconds or so, seems to kind of go away. So I think that's probably just something that is common with these emulators running on Android. And I think if you probably dig into the settings, you might be able to improve that quite a bit, or something like that but again once the game gets going yeah it's fine moving on to the wii i checked out another game i absolutely love on this system not many people talk about it and that is need for speed nitro and uh this was interesting because again you're having to emulate a wii remote and some games will work better than others this one was interesting because when i first fired it up it thought I had a second player, and so it would only give me split screen. I ended up having to disable the Wii Remote emulation just temporarily so that it would force it to use a standard controller, and then it worked fine. But again, it's it's these type of things that you're gonna have to kind of mess around with. Almost none of this is really out of the box, gonna work flawlessly, you know. Some of them do, but a lot of them will require you to go in and kind of mess around with it. But again, once I did that with this game, yeah, you can see here, it runs perfectly. And then I wanted to check out some other systems, just throw some at it here. And the first one was the Dreamcast. And you know, if you're gonna play the Dreamcast, what are you gonna play? You're gonna play Crazy Taxi, of course. And as you can see here, 
it runs well. It runs really well, actually. It was flying down these these streets. It's it's hilarious too because when you're playing on that little screen, man, it's like you're trying to see ahead when you're driving that fast, and it's it's pretty tough actually. But uh, yeah, this is running really well. I also booted up Cannon Spike. This is a game that is exclusive to the Dreamcast and one that gets overlooked often. And as you can see here, it's a really fun shooter. It's got kind of weird controls, but once you get to used to those controls after a couple seconds or so, this is a really fun game. Um, and again, yeah, it's running really well. You also have PSP emulation on here. This is another system that is close and dear to my heart and decided to boot up Soul Calibur on here, a game I haven't really spent a ton of time playing. You guys know I'm not super big into fighting games, so please excuse how lame I am in this game. However, it is fully 3D. It was cool to play as Kratos. And uh, yeah, it's running really well. What do you think? Um, I like it. I like it. The uh, the form factor is, also, is still a little weird. Um, and the shoulder buttons, since they're not, since they're left and right and not up and down, uh, my muscle memory isn't quite there for that one, but I'm sure if I played it a few times, uh, I'd get there. Yeah, for me, I just I would like it to be just like maybe an inch wider. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah. It's it's a little it's uncomfortable. Not the first time I've said that, by the way. <laughs> but yeah, it's just a little little small for my paws. But overall, I, I I like it, and and it feels good. It feels heavy. It feels quality. Like, yeah, quality like yeah. it's been put together. And so that, guys, is my quick little review of the Ambernick RG406V handheld. Now, I'll be honest, I don't spend a lot of time with these Android devices doing emulation. I mostly actually just use my Steam Deck. And so it was really kind of fun to, to dive into this world a little bit and mess around with this and kind of see where it's at currently. But I know these things are really popular, so I wanted to give it a go. And I have to say, yeah, it seems like it's a pretty cool device. Uh, obviously, you just got to be prepared to go in there and kind of tweak things here and there, especially if you want to do some of the newer, quote unquote, newer, right? As new as the PlayStation 2 is. I guess it's what? Geez, probably 20 plus years old at this point. But if you want to get those type of games to run, you are going to end up doing a little bit of tweaking here and there. So just be aware. I should also mention, though, again, if you're going to do the NES, Super NES, the, the Genesis Mega Drive stuff, you're going to have no problems whatsoever. I did mess around with that as well, and those pretty much just work as expected. But if you want to check out this device, I'll put a link down in the video description below. The people who sent this to me have a discount code, so that's going to be down there as well if you want to pick one up for yourself. And as always, guys, I want to thank you for watching my channel. Thank you for subscribing, and take care.